How do you do? There's a feeling among some believers of God that surrendering to Him is a one-time thing, that once you accept Jesus and maybe find a congregation, read the Bible, suddenly everything will fall into place. You won't mess up anymore. Your heart will be totally changed. Well, your heart will be transformed, but only by practicing that posture of surrender day after day after day. We're continuing the story of a guy who faced many challenges to his faith, a guy who had to recommit himself to love and truth even after his heart and mind and life were unshackled. Quickly now. I turned the TV off, and I cleaned up my socks and the stuff that was on the floor. Okay, I, I've just about finished the laundry. Uh, do you see anything else that might make Daddy angry? The plates! Got it? I got it. What's for dinner? Chicken tetrazzini. He doesn't like that one. I thought he did. He doesn't. I think you're thinking of some other chicken casserole. It, it'll be fine. Hi, Dad. Your bike's on the lawn again. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll get it. Hi, hon. What's for dinner? Chicken tetrazzini. You know I hate that. Well, you know, actually, I didn't. It's getting hard to keep track of what you hate. You need me to write it down for you? Actually, what you could write down for me is anything you do like. That's what I'm really losing track of. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? I feel like nothing makes you happy anymore. Give me a beer, will you? This is Unshackled. Dramatizing True Life Stories, produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. The mission has been a refuge for the homeless people of Chicago since 1877. Today, hundreds of men, women, and children receive hot meals, refreshing showers, and a safe bunk to spend the night. There are special programs and counseling available to our guests who are struggling with drug and alcohol addiction. During their stay at the mission, Many of our visitors learn their purpose and develop the skills they need to return to life outside. Each guest is spoken to one-on-one -on -one by our staff and introduced to the one who shall supply all our needs. For many, it's the first time they have heard that they are loved by God. As they begin to follow Him, lives are transformed. They leave the mission with renewed strength and confidence eager to share the good news, which is what this program celebrates. All the mission services are offered free of charge, thanks to generous financial gifts from listeners like you. Due to the subject matter, parental guidance is suggested for today's episode. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is program number 3566 in the series, Unshackled. The program that makes you face yourself and think. Let's go back to a more joyful time. When we last talked, I shared how I found my way to God, or how He found His way to me. And I had just met a woman in the congregation I'd started going to. Unfortunately, she turned me down when I first asked her out. But Hugh Nemitz is not one to be easily defeated. So Lisa and I started getting to know each other as friends. We started talking on the phone regularly, and after a couple of months of this, I couldn't hold it in anymore. So, anyway, I just feel like the quality of their sandwiches doesn't really compare no, to... No, I, I agree. Not to the one on Main Street. Right, but <laughs> Heather disagrees with me. Well, Heather can eat sandwiches by herself, then. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> well, I should probably... Uh, I need to tell you something, Lisa. Okay. What is it? Are you okay? Yeah, sure. I, I'm great. I, uh, I just... Yeah. I, I like you. Well, I like you too, Hugh. I, I mean, I really like you. I really like you too. I'm actually... I'm actually in love with you, Lisa. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we'll meet a man whose faith was sidelined while his career, luxuries, and other distractions took the front seat. 
will learn how he got back on track when God chased him down. The continued true story of Hugh Nemitz, right now on Unshackled. We were like teenagers in love. I couldn't stop thinking about her. We spent more and more time together, and soon enough, I asked her father for her hand in marriage, and we began our lives together. For our first anniversary, we took a trip to Israel. Lisa had been there before, so together we visited the Holy Land. It was a powerful trip, though we were devastated to learn that my dad had fallen ill and passed away upon our return. As I processed this loss and our future plans, something was stirring in my heart. This is delicious. What is this? Chicken stir-fry. Do you like it? I love it. So good. Mmm. You know... Hun, I can't stop thinking about Israel. The 700 scriptures about the return of our people to Israel are jumping off the pages as I read the Bible. I know. I'm having the same experience. Really? I want to go back. I'm feeling led that we should. I'd felt isolated from my Jewish upbringing, only recently realizing that the gospel characters I was now reading about were all Jewish. I wanted to connect with my roots. We took a big leap and made the move without knowing any Hebrew or having any connections. It took a while to adjust, but soon we were experiencing much of the richness, history, and complexity of this land. Around this time, we also decided to start our family, and when Lisa was about six weeks pregnant, her brother came to visit. Wow. That is... Wow. Isn't it amazing? The Dead Sea was top of my list. I'd read all about it. I told you. I remember you told us that this was your number one. Yeah, but nothing, nothing could have prepared me for this. It's just spectacular. The caves of Qumran are this way. As soon as Lisa gets back from the bathroom, we'll go over. You guys. Lisa. What is it, sweetie? Ah. Ah, I can't. Are you okay? What do you need? I don't know. I don't know. It hurts. Do you want to rest while we go? I think I need to go back to Jerusalem. Okay. All right. We can (gasps) carry you. Ready? One, two, three. It's going to be all right, sweetie. Hugh, I'm bleeding. We never got to meet our baby, Zachary. Lisa miscarried at the hospital. We wept bitterly and grieved his loss. In time, God blessed us with two daughters, Perry and Ellie. But we will always hold Zachary in our hearts. After four years, we were restless with life in Israel. It exhausted us physically and spiritually to be in the center of such conflict and be far from our community. We made the move back to Florida, and I had a job waiting for me at a car dealership. I threw myself into my work, determined to make up for the time I'd spent away. Well, if it isn't the most beautiful daughter in the world. (laughs) Hi, Daddy. (laughs) And the most beautiful wife in the world. Well, hello. Ew, gross. What do you say we go out for dinner tonight? Pizza, please! I was thinking something a little more upscale. What's the occasion? Oh, just that I love you. And you. (laughs) And? And after five years of feeling like I fell behind all these other guys because, you know, because... Because we follow God's calling to live in a completely different place and develop a better understanding of our history and have rich once-in-a-lifetime experiences. Right, yeah, well... You know that put me really behind at work. Sure. But now, you are looking at one of the top car salesmen in the country. No way. (laughs) Yes way. They showed me the numbers. They gave me a bonus. I'm flying high. Way to go, Dad. Can we get pizza? (laughs) Thanks, sweetheart. All right. Sure, let's do pizza. But as my status and money increased, my spiritual life became less and less of a priority. I had it made. I didn't really need God. We moved to Tennessee, began building a beautiful new house. I got a new motorcycle. I started drinking more. But with my job at the new dealership, my career started to stagnate, and then it started to spiral. Man, I really thought he was going to go for the truck. I just don't understand it. I've never worked at a place with such noncommittal clients. Yeah, well, there's two other dealerships down the street. What? Right across Route 14. As I struggled to sell cars, Lisa and I were introduced to a new and exciting restaurant franchise investment. It's been very popular in Kentucky. We think it's going to do really well here. 
Well, we're really thrilled, and we think we have the perfect location. I think you do, too. And you've got the capital secured? Yep, we're all squared away. We refinanced our home for the seed money for the loan. We've got the vendors ready to go. We're ready to start the build-out. We've signed the lease, too. We are all in. But just before the deal was finalized, I got a call. Hugh, um, sorry to have to tell you this, but... Well, you have five days to close your loan. Five days was nowhere near enough. We needed a month. Now we faced a lawsuit from the landlord, and all of the equity gained from refinancing our home was up in smoke. Hugh, what are we going to do? What happened was this. I think I should tell this part. You sure? I got it. Well, all right then. This was a terrible time with the whole franchise deal falling through. We had over a year of going back and forth with lawyers and fearing we were going to lose everything until we appealed for their forgiveness, and by some miracle, it worked. But in the meantime, Hugh was changing. He had been drinking more, using awful sexual language, pulling away from our life in the congregation. The girls and I were terrified for him to come home from work, and we worked hard to make sure the house and the food was just how he liked it. One day, Hugh was in the shower, and I couldn't resist the urge to look at his phone. I was almost certain of what I would find. Texts from another woman that... Password? Why does he have a password unless he's... Let's see. What would he use as a... What are you doing? Are you having an affair? What? What are you talking about? Why is your phone locked? What's going on? Why are you looking at my phone? I'm your wife. I have a right to know these things. Hugh! I don't love you anymore. I feel absolutely nothing for you. What's going on? Are you getting a divorce? Your mom and I just had a little disagreement, that's all. I don't want... want you to get divorced. I'm sorry, Lisa. I (laughs) didn't mean it. I'm sorry. But the damage had been done. And that wasn't even the worst of it. What are you doing on my computer, sweetie? I had to print something for school. Why don't these people have any clothes on? Ew. Okay, get away from there. That's... What what are those pictures, Daddy? Not long after my daughter discovered my porn addiction, I found myself pulled over on the side of the road. Our failed business venture had cost us just about everything. I was so ashamed of the husband and father I had become. I reached for the pistol in my glove compartment. We'll continue with Hugh's story in just a moment. I didn't pull the trigger. I found out later that Lisa had been praying for me the whole time. I'd repented of my pornography addiction to her, and she'd poured out her heart to God, begging for me to be restored. A couple months later, while driving home from work, I had an encounter, an awakening where I stared down the shambles that my life had become. At first, I didn't know where to begin to find God again, but then God found me. Where have you been? What happened to you? Well... Did you get fired? No. So then what's going on? Why are your eyes so swollen and bloodshot? Oh, honey. Hugh, are you on drugs? No, Lisa, I've been crying. I... What is it? God showed me. God showed you what? This song came on, this, this Christian song. You don't listen to Christian music anymore. I did, though. I, I don't even know why. I, I chose it and I just played it on repeat over and over because It moved me, like God was speaking to me, telling me how much he loved me. It felt like God was inviting me back. I started crying and I couldn't stop. I begged God to forgive me. How could he forgive me? I I repented of what I've done, what I've said, what I've looked at, how I've treated you and the girls, so many mistakes. And I just sat by the side of the road and wept. And he was so gentle, Lisa. He forgave me. He set me free again, even after all. Can you ever forgive me, Lisa? 
Oh, how I've missed you. I can forgive you, but you better turn things around. Oh, I'm gonna wait till you see. I learned that night that he truly is the God who makes all things new. Even me, when I thought I was broken beyond repair. Of course, it took time to rebuild my daughter's trust and Lisa's too, but slowly we fell in love with one another again. I started walking with the Lord again. I felt him transforming me. Hey, girls. Mom says I can't bring my hoodie to summer camp. I said you can't bring four hoodies to summer camp. You were only going to be there for a week. But I don't know what color I'll feel like wearing then. Well, I might have room for another hoodie in my suitcase. Okay, but sooner or later you'll have to learn that you carry what you pack. I understand. Thanks, Dad. This is the place that has that prayer room 24-7, right? Mm-hmm. Think you'll spend time in there? Well, maybe not 24-7, but... Actually, I'm looking forward to it. I'm proud of you, honey. Me too, Dad. Can you fit two hoodies, do you think? Perry. That week at the camp refreshed me and brought me further into God's presence. It renewed my passion for prayer and my enthusiasm to share the gospel with others. I kept listening to more Christian music, and there was a particular lyric about setting God as a seal upon my heart and upon my arm. And I felt God telling me to... Really? Yeah. You said you'd never get a tattoo. I know. You said they're trashy. I know. And you know, they're permanent. I know. What would you get a tattoo of? The Hebrew inscription, Kadosh Ladenai. It means holy to the Lord. Uh, Well, it's not going to feel good. It's really going to... Ow! Ah! Almost there. (laughs) Really? (laughs) <laughs> no, man, this is just the outline. Oh, sure, okay. Pretty tough, though. <sighs> Who, me? <laughs> yeah, man, your oh. forearm. Your inner forearm, especially. I mean, oh. it's like one of the most sensitive places on your body. Oh, you don't say. For real? Yeah. You want to pick somewhere a little easier for you first? Oh, this will be my one and only... Ah, uh, no. No, this is exactly what I wanted. <sighs> Why? Well, actually, it's... Uh, it's uh, because this is the part of the body where Jewish inmates were marked for uh, death at concentration camps. To me, this tattoo represents holiness and life. Uh, that restoration is possible. Sick, man. Okay, here comes the hard stuff. We haven't hit the hard stuff yet? While life with God was more fulfilling, my challenges did not disappear. One night, I had a terrible fever and told Lisa I had a pain of 11 on a scale of 1 to 10. She rushed me to the ER, only to be sent away when the doctor found nothing wrong at first glance. Well, something was definitely wrong. Back at home, I was so aggressive and irrational, Lisa called our neighbors in for backup. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hi, Georgia, thank you. Of course, dear. Where is he? (coughs) The bathroom. Hugh, what are you doing? Oh, come off. Can't get up. Why won't it? Stupid purple, just like my curtains. What are you saying? <clears throat> no, no, buddy, that's the toilet seat. That stays on the toilet. Why don't you come out here to the living room? How long has he been this way? Just tonight. It came on all of a sudden. I don't understand. Is he? You no! He's trying to relieve himself on the couch. I'll get him back in the bathroom. I don't want to stick to any kind of... Cheese is the way to go, for sure, or maybe dog. Okay, we need to go back to the hospital. I'll take the girls back to my house. You go. Are you sure? Go. Soon, the doctors discovered just how serious his condition was. White blood cells had invaded his spinal fluid. He was in acute liver and renal failure. At first, they thought it was caused by meningitis. I struggled to keep up with all the medical jargon and panicking at the severity of the situation. The doctor warned me not to go home with the understanding conveyed that this might be my last night with you. How magnificent. What's that? What is magnificent, Hugh? Wow. What do you see? What's Daddy talking about? He's in an altered mental state, sweetheart. I see angels. Angels with... Huge wings circling the throne of God. What color are their wings? Like 
Fire. Their wings are big flames of fire. Whoa. God, please be with him. Please keep him safe. Give him peace. He is with him, Mom. Don't you hear him? Dad is with God right now. It was determined that open heart surgery was necessary if there was any chance of saving him. Everyone we knew all around the world was praying for Hugh on August 6th, eight days after we were admitted. Our friends and family were there in case they had to say goodbye. But the surgery went well. And though his recovery was meant to take five days, the very next day, Hugh was... Hi, Lisa. Hugh! What are you doing out of bed? Oh, I was just going for a little walk with my daughter. Doesn't he look good, Mom? He looks wonderful. <laughs> I still face many health challenges with my hearing, speech, and vertigo, among other things, but that hasn't stopped me. God isn't done with my story yet. He prompted me and Lisa, along with our daughter Ellie, to return to Israel and made a way for it to happen. As I look back on my life, there are so many things I wish I had done differently. But I see how God was able to bring about good even from my worst moments. I see how so many parts of my story that felt like disappointments were actually leading me towards something greater. The Bible says, A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. And so I will keep following him one step at a time. The God who restored Hugh's heart is available to you too. There's no such thing as beyond repair in God's eyes. God gave Hugh purpose and turned his life around. Who knows how God wants to use and transform your life? In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. That abundant life is for you, listening friend. There is no special prayer, but you can enter his presence right now by praying with us. Heavenly Father, I repent of my sins against you. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead and lives forevermore and will save me now. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for the gift of eternal life through him. Come into my heart and life, Lord Jesus, and make me like you. In your name I pray. Amen.